One of the things I get asked about all the time, and I'm sure all of you get asked about this, and I'm sure some of you are experts in this room, is the new technology of blockchain. And um, when I think of blockchain and, and what it is good for, I think about some of these, uh, these features that, um, uh, that have been proposed. Uh, it is a distributed ledger system that uh, once a transaction has been entered into this uh, ledger, it's irreversible um, and it's mutually verifiable. Um, and, 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 it, and it has a permanence to it um, that, that uh, is anticipated uh, so that you, 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 can't, uh, you, can, you can settle disputes in the future. Um, it's, it's quantitative, so you can put the numbers in there and, and spell out quantities. Um, and uh, it can be used mutually, used as a record uh, for both sides. Uh, plus, it's cheaper, so lawyers are, are kind of worried about uh, disintermediation of their task. Um, here is the, what I would uh, pose as the origins of blockchain technology. Um, you may not know what this is. It looks like a toy. Some of you probably do. It's called a bula, and uh, it uh, is about 5,000 years old. And it's a clay ball that was used in ancient uh, Mesopotamian cities. Um, and inside the ball are those uh, little things that look like toys. Um, these little round things. So, um, how did it work? Uh, the uh, two parties would contract for delivery of some future good. In this case, uh, this might be delivery of, uh, of five sheep. Um, and uh, they would put those sheep into this clay ball. And then they would put their signatures by rolling a... Uh, a little uh, signature um, uh, stone all over the ball so that, the, so that um, it covered the ball. Now, why did, they do, why did they roll it to cover the ball? They rolled it so that nobody could break in, poke a hole in there and take out one of the, the stones. So that was a technology that protected against uh, the uh, corruption of the contract. Um, and, um, well, uh, why did they have these five little pieces like this? The bulle were used before the invention of writing. Um, and uh, this was a financial contract that, that preceded the ability to actually write one down. Um, now, uh, is this permanent? Well, it's lasted for 5,000 years. So that's a lot longer than any blockchain is ever going to last in our society. So this was a great invention. Maybe never, uh, and, uh, ex apart from carving it in stone, this is one of the greatest uh, permanent records of a quantitative uh, co contract. Now, that bulle system evolved into this system, which is a written record. And writing, e writing was developed in order, to, um, uh, in order to record financial contracts or business contracts. I call anything that has a dimension of a promise today and a delivery tomorrow uh, finance. So um, here is an interest rate. Uh, uh, here's, a, here's a loan from about 1600 BC. And um, those little marks on the outside of the ball um, became cuneiform writing impressed into a, a, a tablet. It became really uh, kind of a pain to have to um, put things inside the ball. So they would, they would make marks on the outside saying five sheep. And those marks on the outside became the written language. The word for sheep came from a little symbol for sheep. And five, you had to poke little, five little holes, but then they figured out a nice system for, for, um, for making bigger and bigger numbers. So if anybody asks you why finance is important, well, it led to the invention of the written, of written language. Um, by the way, it also was essential when, when uh, that wasn't just a contract between two people, more than likely it was a contract for delivery of goods to a central temple. Um, the, as cities grew, you had to have a way of planning for getting food to people and a, a way a process of taxation. So um, the growth of cities was facilitated by the ability to make these longer term contracts and also plans, uh, 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 planning accordingly over, um, over years. And so um, it was uh, the first thing that finance made possible was, was a larger urban um, um, 
made cities, uh, gave them the ability to grow larger. I'll show you one more of these tablets before we move on because this is my favorite. This is a, this is a tablet that's about the size of a pineapple and uh, it's in the uh, Yale Library. And <clears throat> it's in Sumerian. Um, you, the way you could tell that is that the marks are in these little um, uh, um, boxes and it's the first record of compound interest. So if anybody uh, uh, you know, asks where does compound interest come from, this thing uh, dates to 2600 to 2400 uh, BC. And the compound interest part, I can actually show you something about it. Um, it was a dispute between two city-states uh, in, uh, in, now in Iraq. And if you zoom in on Google Earth, they both uh, they, they look like desert. Um, and one state uh, conquered the other state, but in doing so, it forced it to pay reparations. It said, look, you've had our land for 80 years, um, and we want you to give it back, but also pay interest on the, uh, for those 80 years. Interest rate for that payment was 33 and a third percent per year. Okay, that's even higher than I pay on my credit card, which is limited at 29.9%. So compound a credit card debt for 80 years, you know it's gonna be huge. So um, to, to, to deal with these issues, the Mesopotamians had to invent ways of making very, very large numbers. So you can see uh, on this where the numbers are. See this right down here, these three holes. That number has to represent something that um, now we would regard, we'd measure um, in the billions. Um, and the way that it worked was, first you'd stick a little, you'd turn over your stick, and it was, had a round bot uh, bottom like, a, like, a, um, uh, like an eraser. You'd stick that in, and that represented 60, because it was base 60. And then you'd have a larger stick, and put on top of that, it would be 60, uh, 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 squared, and you could use powers of 60 um, successively to represent larger and larger numbers. So this was a quite an ingenious, uh, I would call it software, the, the development of mathematics to express very large numbers, an imaginary number actually, because nobody was ever going to pay back what amounts to about a, a, a trillion bushels of grain. Um, but it was finance in, used in the kind of service of a, a, a political dispute. So um, uh, this is just a fascinating document that, that shows you how finance, financial thinking was integrated into the notion of, uh, of society, politics, uh, and the state. 